Will there be enough normal food to feed all people in the future? The food and agriculture industry is on the brink of a major revolution, and it's a change that came right on time. For just 20 years into the future, there might not be enough food to feed 9.7 billion people. Does that mean we will all go hungry? Will we all starve? What will we eat? Before you think that your cannibalistic instincts will have to kick in for you to survive, here's what will be the new normal. Lab-made food, dehydrated food like astronauts eat, algae products and high-protein insects. Oof, gross. And there's no guarantee that you're going to love it. It's the year 2014 and here's what the food is going to look like. After the COVID-19 pandemic wrecked havoc on the world, leaders all over scrambled to avoid or reverse yet another catastrophe, global warming. At the United Nations COP26 in Glasgow earlier this year, the spotlight was on climate change more than ever. From children like Greta Thunberg to scientists and politicians, many have urged the world to act before it is too late. To help limit the effects of global warming, scientists have recommended quick, drastic measures to be taken by society, including fewer internal combustion cars and less travel by airplane. They have also recommended one more change, reduced meat consumption. Sorry, meat lovers. Studies have shown that reducing meat and dairy consumption has a great potential to drastically decrease everyone's carbon footprint. Yes, a vegan diet might just be the best way to save Mother Earth. A study published in 2019 by researchers from the University of Minnesota and Oxford identified certain foods that are good for both our bodies and also for the environment. According to the paper, foods including legumes, whole grain cereals, fruits and nuts are not only associated with improved health, but also have a super low impact on the environment. On the other hand, both processed and unprocessed red meat harm the environment. In addition, those who consume these meats regularly are at a higher risk of heart disease. As for other animal-based products like milk or dairy, these have a smaller or more moderate impact on the environment and health. But still, their contribution is quite monumental when we begin to consider deforestation for animal grazing. To put these things into perspective, meat and dairy products are responsible for nearly 60% of greenhouse gas emissions in the agricultural sector, but they only provide 18% of calories and 13.7% protein. This is a growing problem, given that the world's population is estimated to hit 9.7 billion in the next 20 years. So does this mean no more succulent meat that will make our taste buds dance? Enter Mock Meat, a plant-based version that's available in the market. But what you'll be most interested in are the research projects that investigate how to grow meat from scratch in labs. Both scientists and environmentalists believe that clean meat will be a major breakthrough in the fight against global warming. The market research firm Global Information has estimated the market share of cell-based meat to increase from a mere $1.64 million to a whopping $2.79 billion by 2030. That is huge! Companies like Memphis Meats and Aleph Farms have grabbed this magnificent opportunity by the neck and have been trying to produce poultry and beef by nurturing or growing animal cells in petri dishes. These are then kept in large bioreactors that look quite something like beer brewing vats. Researchers at Japan's Osaka University are even using 3D printing technology to create a more sustainable alternative to the world-renowned Wagyu beef and believe that the alternative will help address food shortages in the future. Meat Table, a Dutch-based startup, is gearing up to offer its eco-conscious consumers an alternative to giving up meat completely as early as next year. Their product is pork that's grown in a lab without harming animals or the environment in the process. And guess what? Lab-based food is not just limited to meat. With the world's population expected to multiply multifold, it's all but obvious that farmers might not be able to meet the surge in demand. Add to the conundrum natural calamities like floods, drought or forest fires, and we're looking at huge sections of hungry people who don't have their staple foods. The UN Food and Agriculture Organization, or FAO, suggests that meeting this demand will require a 50% increase in food production by 2050. A Finland-based startup, Solar Foods, has a potential answer to this problem. The company boasts of its ability to make food out of thin air, all thanks to their new protein, soline, which is made with living microbes that have been grown in a fermenter and a process similar to that of brewing beer. The microbes are fed with nitrogen, oxygen and hydrogen and stored in huge vats. Once the process is complete, a liquid is removed upon completion and is dried to produce the final product, a yellowish powder that's similar to the household staple flour. 
When mixed with oat milk and fried on a pan, you can have fresh pancakes, and when used in food processing, it can be used as a protein additive in noodles or bread. In fact, it can also be used as an ingredient in plant-based meats. It can also be used as a binder in foods, therefore minimizing the need for palm oil, which is environmentally destructive. But does food grown in a lab even taste good? The world's first lab-grown burger was cooked and eaten at a news conference in London. Created from stem cells and cultivated in a lab in the Netherlands, the flavor of this $325,000 burger was thoroughly analyzed by food experts, and here's what they had to say. Henny Ruetzler, an Austrian food researcher, stated that while the burger patty was close to meat, it wasn't as juicy and that she missed salt and pepper. Josh Schoenwald, a food writer, said that the mouthfeel was like meat, but he missed the fat and the flavor was quite different. Well, lab-grown food does seem to have a long way to go, both in terms of price and flavor. Another aspect of the looming food crisis that scientists are worried about is whether everyone will get adequate nutrition. There's an answer to this challenge as well, but you're not going to like it. How would you feel about consuming snack bars, burgers or flour that have been made by grinding insects? This is not a joke, but insect eating or entomophagy could represent the future of food. It is already a common practice in Southeast Asian countries like Thailand, Malaysia and China, some African countries and Brazil and Mexico. Insect farming is considered to be a sustainable way to provide ecologically viable food for the world's ever-growing population. And there are specific insects that have secured the crown in the field of high-protein products, namely mealworms. It has the word meal in its name. How bad could it be? Crickets and grasshoppers. The aim of insect farming and its high-protein products is twofold. Primarily, the mission is to tackle the problem of malnutrition in underdeveloping countries, and secondly, this field aims to reduce the environmental impact that meat-heavy diets may have in the near future. You would probably be surprised to know that mealworms are already on shelves in Switzerland. A Swiss-based startup, Acento, developed insect burgers that could be consumed by humans. The so-called bug balls resemble falafels and are packed with proteins, vitamins, fibers, and unsaturated fats. Yuck, but good at the same time. If this wasn't enough to convince you that the future of food is very bleak, let's look at some algae-based products that are gaining momentum. Abundantly found in both marine and freshwater environments, algae could be the solution to modern food shortages. An agricultural practice that started in Asia, algae farming could soon become the world's biggest crop industry as it can be consumed both by animals and humans. Terramino Foods, a startup based out of San Francisco, recently developed a process to grow fungi that could be transformed into a faux salmon burger. According to the company, the look, taste and smell of the patty are like actual fish. The co-founder and CEO of Terramino, Kimberly Lee, said that the addition of algae and other plant-based ingredients is what makes the burger's flavor profile similar to that of salmon. Overfishing and the accumulation of pollutants like microplastics and mercury in fishing are growing problems and Terramino's algae-based seafood can eventually serve as a sustainable replacement for seafood. And finally, we have our last future food, allergen-free nuts. The gluten-free tiger nut is the best example in this category. It was first showcased in Birmingham in the United Kingdom at the 2018 Ingredient Show. The co-founder of the tiger nut company explained the benefits of these nuts, saying that they were gluten-free superfoods that were not only high in fiber but could also be used as additive-free, minimally processed ingredients in baking. The nuts are akin to sweet, almond-like tubers and are renowned for their high nutritional content that includes vitamin C and E, oleic acid, phosphorus and potassium. Tiger nuts are widespread in Africa, Madagascar, Southern Europe, the Indian continent and the Middle East. And for all those of you who love milk but are worried about its carbon footprint, tiger nuts are primarily used for the production of milk. Milk made from these nuts is also great for those who have both gluten and lactose intolerance. Future food seems like it won't taste too great, but it will definitely solve some big problems. Do you think you love future food or hate it? Does a burger made out of mealworms or algae sound good to you? Comment down below. Like, share and subscribe so that you don't miss the next big why that we answer.